For decades, it was dismissed as science fiction or Cold War legend, a phantom city hidden beneath China's accelerating megacities. Yet in 2025, global news broke with undeniable proof. China had quietly completed the largest functioning underground city ever built, with capacity for a million people, and the West only realized when it was already thriving under their feet. It began, as so many secrets do, with a riddle of vanishing resources and the relentless logic of engineering. In the 2010s and 2020s, soaring populations and climate disasters pushed urban planners into radical action. While Western capitals debated building higher, denser, or greener, teams in cities like Wuhan, Chongqing, and the new tech metropolis of Xiongan drew up designs for a new kind of survival downward. The Optics Valley project in Wuhan appears, on satellite photos, like any massive logistics hub. Grids of trucks, seemingly endless stockpiles of concrete and steel. But local families whispered different stories. For years, scores of new workers would arrive, stay working night and day for weeks, then disappear entirely. Massive earth-moving equipment was delivered and unloaded at peculiar hours. Yet when the dust settled, the skyline hardly changed at all. Occasionally, the ground would vibrate, almost imperceptibly, for hours or even days, but nothing appeared above. In forums and encrypted group chats, urban explorers and security guards began to share rumors of a labyrinth below the city, a city within a city, built for a people who might never leave. It was a marvel not only of engineering but of social choreography. The lower city, as it became known to insiders, was dug using the latest tunneling robots and 3D mapping drones. Its designers divided it into self-sustaining districts, arranged in concentric rings and connected by silent, automated transit lines, each district lit by adaptive LEDs simulating daylight and even the subtle changes of weather. The construction, which spanned over a decade, removed more than 7 million cubic meters of earth enough to fill thousands of Olympic pools. And what filled the void? A place unlike any city above. Five interconnected floors, each carving its own domain from the rock. The first layer, a commercial artery, hosting markets, clinics, athletic complexes, and arcades where holographic trees bloom and children play virtual tag. The second and third, residential wings, ordered to provide for every kind of family singles, multi-generational units, even special accommodations for the elderly and disabled. Far below, discrete engineering lines pulsed with power drawn from surface solar plants and buried hydrogen reserves, guiding the entire ecosystem from one secure control room. Vital systems are designed for redundancy and survival. Intake fans filter air from above, cycling it through ionization chambers to remove particulates before enriching it for easy breathing. Water is drawn from both deep city wells and surface reservoirs, filtered and refiltered then circulated as needed between drinking taps and hydroponic vertical farms that stretch for entire city blocks, all bathed in the calculated blue-purple of growth lamps. Beneath the artificial sky, life pulses with a uniquely underground rhythm. Thousands of residence engineers, families, students, doctors, artists, pass between plaza fountains and playground domes where holographic sunlight shifts gently in artificial clouds. Every 22 hours, a programmed sunset allows workers to rest their eyes and children to sleep before the next artificial dawn. And yet, for all its technical wonders, the lower city was also shaped by its people. Migrants from rural counties and faraway provinces struggling with the price of life above now found affordable apartments in a community free of pollution and unpredictable weather. Smart home systems recognize speech in every dialect. Healthcare and security are automated, with medical robots patrolling corridors and 247 remote monitoring clinics connected via 5G mesh to city hospitals above. Urban sociologists marveled at the adaptation. The first generation of children raised entirely below ground developed new games and traditions. Paper dragon festivals with virtual flames projected on cave walls sports where gravity and air density became subtle challenges. Even Lunar New Year acquired a digital twin in the lower city. Crackers of light and sound launched not into the winter sky, 
but simulated on giant interactive displays in the vast celebration atriums. Of course, the psychological challenges were real. Early test families reported intense surface longing, a deep, almost biological pull toward open air and real sunlight. To counter this, designers worked with behavioral scientists. Courtyards were lined with living trees. Virtual windows displayed real-time views from the city above. And a sky dome, amphitheater, regularly projected surface vistas, festivals, and seasons in real time. In schools, mindfulness and outdoor education were preserved, though outdoor often meant hydro gardens and climbing walls mapped to digital mountains. But the city remained ever alert to threats. In 2022, record-breaking floods destroyed neighborhoods across the Yangtze Basin. Above ground, cities struggled against rising water. Below, Wuhan's underground city functioned undisturbed, its pumps and barriers tested to the brink but holding strong. Officials hailed it as the city's shield against disaster, a sign that the future for China's most vulnerable megacities might no longer lie upward but downward. Some even whispered that it could resist any catastrophe, from war to biological attack. Security remained absolute. Access between the lower city and the world above was strictly controlled. Blast doors, biometric checkpoints, elevator shafts designed for rapid evacuation. Western analysts speculated about dual uses. Could the city function as a government command center, a military shelter, or a high-tech research base in crisis? Some pointed to recent satellite images from the outskirts of Beijing showing vast, new, faintly concealed construction, possibly bunkers, for Party Elite 12. In Xiong'an New Area, China's archetype, Smart City, engineers boasted of an even deeper digital underground. Here, a maze of 380 kilometers of tunnels hosted everything from robot farms to high-speed pipelines, all monitored by a Beidou 5G positioning grid so precise you could pinpoint a lost device within a parking space 34. Networks of sensors tracked resource flows and residents in real time, learning patterns and predicting needs with advanced AIs. Drones delivered medical supplies within minutes. Virtual assistants anticipated residents' essential needs and scheduled infrastructure maintenance problems were often solved before humans even noticed. But with Utopia came trade-offs. For all their safety, underground citizens surrendered privacy to total surveillance. Experts debated, was this the next generation of urban safety, or a digital panopticon, where every move, word, and purchase, every step a resident made, was logged, analyzed, and optimized? Some residents adapted gladly. Others quietly longed for the mess and unpredictability of life above. Still, surveys found residents reporting higher-than-expected satisfaction. They cited freedom from pollution, security, and an unbreakable sense of belonging. The true breakthrough came not in concrete, but in culture. Artists flourished in these contained worlds, sculpting monumental works in the echoing halls, inventing new forms of digital opera, and even creating subterranean gardens out of fused minerals and living moss. In the commercial arcs, entrepreneurs tested the limits of logistics and commerce, fully automated groceries, underground logistics pipelines connecting every block, and entertainment domes streamed from surface events worldwide. And as the world stared in astonishment, the greatest shock lingered. How could the West have missed this? In a time of open information and sophisticated surveillance, China had created an entire civilization beneath its oldest cities, and the world's most powerful countries were finding out at the same time as everyone else. Was it secrecy, national purpose, or simple disbelief at such audacity? Perhaps the answer is cultural. In the West, living underground was long associated with poverty, exile, or survival. In China, a country where ancient ingenuity built vast water tunnels, mountain caves, and entire wartime cities below ground, the earth itself became a partner in shelter. Today, the lower city stands as both a marvel and a warning, a glimpse at what might await on a changing planet. As new plans are drafted for even greater projects, 
cities with populations rivaling London and New York, perhaps built entirely beneath the Earth's surface, one thing is clear. The future of civilization is no longer bound only to the sky. The greatest stories and the greatest cities may now rise in secret below our feet.